All right, everybody. Today we're going to be talking about Stillbite. And Stillbite is a very overlooked mineral. And honestly, when was the last time you heard somebody saying, hey, I'm going to run up the old crystal shop and pick up some Stillbite later? Like, it's just, it's, it's very overlooked. It's not a very commonly associated mineral. And I think the reason for that is the specimens that it comes with most of the time are from India and you're going to, it's not going to be the primary, it's going to be the secondary mineral. So a lot of times if, if you do know about apophyllite, um, that commonly comes with stillbite and those they're called zeolites. You, you'll commonly see them mixed together. Um, this is one where it's, pretty much all still bite and you can kind of see it's like a pinkish uh light pink orangish kind of color and still bite like i said very overlooked mineral and especially for its metaphysical properties um there's better crystals and minerals for what it does but hey we're my my whole thing of this channel is I'm going to talk about every possible mineral and crystal and um, fossil, everything out there that has energy. And this is another one. It has its own specific energy to it. It vibrates at its own frequency. So this is very good. If I had to pick one thing specifically for Stillbite, it would be studying. And learning now my learning and studying days i mean in terms of school college is long gone but this is the perfect mineral and i think you can get this polished too in little polished pieces the the best thing is to keep it on you um close to you while you're studying now when you're studying it not only helps you to understand the knowledge, like what you're reading or listening to, it, it kind of breaks through that barrier to help you get it. Sometimes if you read something, I know for me anyway, sometimes if I read something, I have to read it again, maybe even again, and sometimes it just doesn't click. And then one of those times, it's like, wait a minute, I get it now. And that's especially with math. Ugh, not a big math fan. But especially... It, it's tough in these courses now. I mean, my daughter goes to school and it's tricky learning all this stuff, especially for the first time. And this is great for that because it, it helps you to understand what you're getting with the knowledge. But not only does it help you understand it and kind of break it down and, and help you like pinpoint so you that light bulb goes off. But it also helps you to retain that knowledge. And that's kind of important too because I don't know about you guys. I'm basing it off of me. A lot of times I'll learn something or... And then if you ask me uh, six months later, I can't remember. But this helps you when you learn it to retain it. It helps it stick. So that's really good too. And that's great for, well, anybody... But mostly if you're going to school, um, college, anything like that, where you have kind of difficulties learning, this is the perfect mineral for that. Give it a try. This is where it excels. And if I had to pick one thing, that's what it would be. So keeping a piece of this close to you, preferably against your skin, an appendant, a bracelet, even in your pocket, um, would, would work wonders for that. So let me show you another one here. This one, as you can see, is a little deeper colors. And still by, it's not as amazing as your amethysts and stuff like that, but it's really nice. It's got a very pinkish, orangish hue to it. This one, you could definitely see that color pop a lot more. And this is kind of a better representation of what it looks like. So... The other thing is, Stillbite is great for meditation. Now, 
again, are there better minerals and crystals for meditation? Yes, there are. But this could be used in conjunction or it's just like, I, I always refer to it kind of like pills. If somebody takes pill A, it might not work for them at all. Uh, not at all. It, it's, it all depends on the person. Sometimes if somebody takes pill number B or herb number B or whatever, that might work wonders for them. It's, it, there's, it's so different and unique to, to the person working with the crystal. That's why you really got to work with it and you got to stick with it a little while and see how it goes. But still bite is another one of them great for meditation. And I'm going to just assume you know how to meditate. Hopefully I'll get into some deeper videos and discussions on meditation at some point, but this really stills your mind. And the whole purpose of meditation is to still your mind, get rid of all your thoughts and you just become a little pinpoint of consciousness. And that's what you're shooting for when you meditate. And this helps you break through that barrier and get to that point quicker. Again, one of my other videos I think was, is about dog tooth calcite. Does dog tooth calcite work better in terms of meditation? Yes. But combine the two of them work. Maybe it won't, maybe, you know, you never know, but in, in my, from my personal experience, I have better experiences using dog tooth calcite specifically for meditation, but try still bite, give it a shot. Um, it definitely will calm you, put you into that. It's a very, um, spiritual stone still bite. And I don't know if I said this already, but it does come from India mostly. I'm sure there's other areas where it comes from, but most of the time this comes with a, a pophilite or still bite just like it is. And they come from India and I'll show you some more specimens coming up where, uh, but everything I have is from India in terms of still bite. Um, so, okay. Studying. Definitely. That's, that's number one. This also can be used with the heart chakra to open it and balance it. However, if you're going to work with still bite, you want to get a specimen where there's still bite mixed with green apophyllite. That is money in terms of heart chakra stuff. But if you just have still bite, I wouldn't recommend it specifically for heart chakra because there's so much else better out there that can get the job done. But again, something to keep in mind and, and work with. The other one, and this is, here's another one. This one's very pale looking, but again, it's just, it's a nice, nice specimen. Another one from India, very pale, pinkish, orangish color. But the other thing, so we got studying, we have the, the deep meditation stuff, intuition, intuition. I'd probably put this at number two besides the studying intuition is like when you know something without knowing it. And I know that's kind of, that sounds kind of complicated, but how many times did you pick up on something and kind of know it was going to happen or just have this intuition not to do something? whether it be seconds prior to the event or an hour to the event intuition is kind of knowing that it's like that gut feeling. Hey, don't go in there. Don't do it or go for it either. Or that's big with still bite. And definitely if you keep this, I would think more in terms of jewelry Let's be honest. I don't think somebody's going to be, well, I got to get home today and work with my still bite. Now, you know, if so, great. But if you have this in a jewelry form and you kind of wear it and forget about it type of thing, you will definitely have more intuition and you'll have that more frequently. And you might not associate it with still bite, but it is. And it's just going to tap into that intuitive uh, point in your mind where you're going to start picking up on stuff like really quickly. So, and that goes along with the studying aspects too. It's all generally connected in the mind somewhere in there, but definitely those are the three big ones, um, to work with 
this mineral. And now let me show you some of my other specimens here. Let me get these out of here. And this one is probably my favorite. It is pretty much pure stillbite. And this is a whopper. This is my favorite one I have. And I have this front and center on one of my shelves. And again, if you're looking at this, there's other specimens that are, are for this size that's more beautiful and nicer looking and, you know, whatever. But this is gorgeous. Look at this thing. I mean, here's what I was talking about. This comes from India. These crystals in here all mixed in are apophyllite. And they, I don't think I made a video on those yet. I will. Commonly, when you get stillbite, you will see apophyllite mixed in with it. Just like you see here. So, that's a very common thing. But look at this guy. This is a beauty. And even in person, it looks darker, deeper color. Like a peach kind of a color. Now, let me show you my last one here. This one is pretty heavy. Now, this is an all still bite. This has still bite mixed in with it. I got to rest this down. I can't lift it. But these are all apophyllite. I would refer to this more as an apophyllite specimen than a still bite specimen. But the two of these work great together. And they just harmonize perfectly. And that's why they are together. And that's why they grow together. But you can see the still bite all throughout here on this just monster piece. And... This is going to work great. Now, obviously, you're not going to take this to school with you. <laughs> you're going to want something a little smaller if you intend on using it for um, retaining knowledge and studying. But just wanted to show you, this is the one of the bigger ones I have. I do have some other Apophyllite ones that are pretty big, but in terms of still bite anyway, another just awesome specimen. And I love showing these off because they're awesome. So let me put that there. And the only other thing I wanted to say... Um, I forgot about this. I meant to do this in the beginning of the video. I just want to say thank you to everybody so much. My channel, I just started this in March of 2022. Just started this. And just uploaded videos only a couple weeks ago. So I really appreciate all the subscribers so far. And I think I'm currently at around 200 or something. I got a long way to go. And I'm going to be around for quite a while. I'm not going anywhere. But very excited to make videos for you guys and get good feedback and good comments. So I am super... And sorry about that. I think my other video got cut off somehow or I bumped it. But I'll merge these two together. But anyway, just wanted to say thank you to everybody for all the uh, support and subscribers and comments and everything so far. And... Once I hit a thousand subscribers, I cannot wait to start giving away crystal and mineral specimens. I'm going to try to do it weekly with, um, I don't want to call it a raffle, but like a giveaway where you subscribe or, uh, have like a little form online and fill out your information and submit it and I'll pick a winner. That's going to be awesome. I'm really looking forward to that. Really looking forward to that. But yeah, that's all about still bite and any questions or whatever you guys want to talk about, just hit me up in the comments and love to hear what you guys think and if anybody has worked with this. But another beautiful mineral is Stillbite. All right, talk to you guys next time. Right, guys so today we're going to be talking about lipidolite and lipidolite is one of these stones where me personally i use it probably at least twice a week and you'll completely understand why when i get to that in a minute so lipidolite this is a, a pretty good representation of it and i have a bunch of different specimens here which i could show you so lipidolite is like a purple purplish a light purple 
and a silver combination. And in a lot of the other specimens, it's really eye-popping. This one, eh, it's not amazing. It's beautiful, but it's not going to be like, whoa, look at that. But I'll show you some ones that will definitely make your eyes pop out of your head. So, Lepidolite is commonly referred to as the grandmother stone. And the reason for the grandmother stone, and let me, while I'm talking to you here, I'll show you this one. This is a, a raw point, and you could see, this is a very light purple, but you could see all the silver flecks, the little flakes, I guess you'd call them in there, the little speckles. And in person, it's even more beautiful, just shimmering. Um, but you could see, Lepidolite's like a purplish, very light purple. But um, it's commonly referred to as the grandmother stone. And the reason for that is, it's almost like you have to imagine going over your grandma's house, your grammy ma's house, and you had a rough day. You had a rough day at work. You're stressed out. You're, you're just, you're irritated. Your mind is shot. And I know you've all had those type of days because during, with my day job, uh, it commonly happens to me. By the time I come home, you just, you're, you're kind of just mentally shut down and you need something just to kind of get all that funk off you, to get all that negative energy. And it's easy to attract all that and let that negative energy just accumulate all during the day and some days you just can't help it if you don't break away from it. It's just going to collect on you. And it's very difficult to break away from that. And that's what kind of puts you in that downhill, bad mood, bad vibes, all that kind of stuff. And stress, anxiety, all that kind of stuff aids in it. It just bogs you down throughout the day. So by the time you come home, it's like going over to your grandma's house and walking up to your grandma and just giving her, she gives you this big hug the big grandma hug and, and you know what it's like immediately your day is better your grandma has that nurturing motherly just energy about her where she can make everything better crack out some food crack out some <laughs> of her cinnamon rolls whatever the case may be and you're feeling better suddenly the stressors of the day they're gone as you sit back and you're, you're, you're hanging out with your grandma. Um, this is what lipidolite does. Lipidolite is the grandmother stone for a reason. It has those nurturing, calming metaphysical properties associated with it. And those are perfect when you had that crappy, rotten day where you just come home and you're just kind of shot, mentally shot. And I use this guy the most. And again, it might not look the most amazing, but this is my go-to. I keep this on a shelf, uh, it, almost in one of the first rooms when I walk in my house. Grab the old Lepidolite stone. And the cool thing is you don't have to like grab the Lepidolite stone and enter like a deep meditative trance and do all kinds of crazy stuff. You could just hold this. You could just kind of relax with it shut your eyes, just kind of zone out and, and focus on the, the crystal. Just holding it is often enough. And the cool part is it kind of just puts a wave of, it's, it's, a, it's a very calming energy, but it also has a little bit of a punch to it in a way, but it's a very, it's hard to explain, but it's not going to overwhelm you like, you know, fill you with crazy energy or anything like that, but it's going to kind of dissolve and chip away all that garbage you have accumulated all throughout the day. And it might not be instantaneous, but you grab this stone, you relax for it on the couch, whatever the case may be, zone out, watch TV, whatever your method is to, to currently relax after a horrible day, incorporate lipidolite. And it'll be 10 times easier to get all that crud off you, that negative funk. And you're going to feel better. It, it really is amazing what it does for the energy body. And it works with 
mostly the higher third eye. I, I would stop. I would say it's more of a third eye chakra stimulator. Um, more of the higher chakras. But this works with just clearing your entire energy body. Clearing all the sludge. Clearing all the crap. You could wave it around kind of uh, around your head, chest, feet, whatever the, the case may be. Just holding it in your hand should be enough. You could put it on your third eye chakra. You, you could clear anxiety. But the cool part about it is you don't have to do anything too crazy with this stone. Sometimes a lot of stones, to connect to them, it, you kind of have to en not enter a deep meditative state or anything like that. But you have to f work more with intent. This stone, you don't really have to do that. And that's kind of the cool part about Lepidolite. It's an easy go-to to just bust up all that stagnant energy. And all that crap that's clogging you up, get rid of it. And it helps. So Lepidolite is also, it's, a, it's an encouraging stone. It, it, it kind of gives you a sense of calm and a sense of tranquility when there's times in your life where you're overwhelmed. Whether it be work, whether it be stressors of whatever you're going through this will help it really does and again i could say it over and over and over and over the main thing it does is just bust up all that garbage off you and just get rid of it just get rid of it it's it's the perfect grandmother stone um the other stuff i've uh, mainly i use lipidolite for that specific reason and I don't go crazy trying to do anything with it in terms of, uh, you know, developing any crazy uh, psychic powers or anything like that because it is related to a third eye, the third eye chakra. But the thing is, I've never personally, and everybody has their own experiences, one crystal might do a little something different than it does for somebody else, but it's never really overwhelmed my third eye chakra in terms of causing any crazy lucid dreams or doing anything. Part of what I do with all the crystals, when I try to connect with them, I'll do them passively, which is you're just kind of holding it and letting the energy kind of soak into your energy body. Um, using intent is another way. And also sleeping with them is another perfect way. And a lot of energy will soak into your body overnight into your energy body and some of them help you sleep, this, that, the other thing. I haven't really got any great benefits of with lipidolite. I have put it on my third eye chakra and entered meditative states. And I have seen bursts of cool colors and stuff like that. But it hasn't really done anything past that. Like, um, So I can't really contribute anything else crazy that it's doing in terms of that kind of stuff. But it's a very easy to work with stone. Great kind of uh, in terms of like a beginner type of stone because you could use it passively and passively is mean you just hold it and it's going to soak its energies its vibration it's just going to soak into your energy body it's got a pretty good kick to it but nothing overwhelming and again it's going to break up that stagnation all that garbage and that's what you want it to do. So let me show you a couple others. That's the gist of it there. This one, look at this guy. This is a beautiful specimen of lipidolite. You can see the just the silver and the purple. This is polished on the top and just raw formation all around on this point. Oh my. And it's just, it's beautiful absolutely beautiful and i do want to mention i do sell a lot of these crystals i sell all types of crystals in my etsy shop um i think actually this specific one i do have for sale actually but um i have a bunch of these type of points and whatever else but just letting you know i do have um commonly sell lots of different specimens and stuff and my i'll put the link in the description below and I, it's also on the top of my banner you could click on the little link on the banner of my YouTube page and it will take you directly there too. Um, but look at the colors and everything on that. Just deep, beautiful. If this one's a combination of all types of deep purples, uh, light purples, and just that silver. 
that just meshes everything perfectly together. Now, let's see here. I'm going to get to this one. This is another nice specimen I have. This is uh, all polished, and it is another beautiful representation of lipidolite. And I love the colors. Just gorgeous, gorgeous specimen. And again, easy to work with lipidolite. And now this one, I'm going to have to take two hands because it's a little heavy. Oh man, that's heavy. Look at this whopper. And this is how lipidolite looks kind of in the raw stage. Look at this thing. I mean, I'm actually struggling a little bit to hold this up. I got to put my, my hands, uh, my elbows on the table. This thing is a monster. It's got to be a five, six, seven pounds, maybe more. And look at this thing. Even on the bottom, it's just gorgeous. And hopefully the camera's picking up everything on it. Look at this. Even the back of it is beautiful. Um, now, again, you don't need a massive specimen like this to work with. All you need is um, a tumbled stone, a piece of it, whatever the case may be. But something like this, I just wanted to show you because it is in my collection. And I'm proud of it. Look at this thing. Whoo! I love it. Awesome. And that's what it looks like. Imagine digging this sucker out of the ground. Wow. So that's what we have with Lipidolite. Um, we're going to be talking, I'm going to be talking about all types of crystals. Um, but this is one, and I could talk about crystals all day. Seriously. I really could. But um, definitely keep watching. I'm going to start posting. Uh, I'm going to try. Not going to try. I'm going to do. I'm going to post tons and tons of videos on all different types of specimens and not just your amethysts and your uh, quartz and your common stuff. I'm going to do everything, everything. And I'm going to list all their metaphysical properties, um, how to work with them. I'm going to list other videos on uh, how to connect with crystals, how to cleanse crystals. Um, Lipidolite, I will say in my point of view, a lot of times when you work with crystals, you should cleanse them. Lipidolite, I don't really necessarily get into cleansing it frequently. People use all different types of, types of stuff to cleanse crystals, but I wouldn't really worry about that with Lipidolite. Um, other videos I'm going to make on how to cleanse your crystals, all different types of techniques, and also how to charge them. Um, again, lipidolite, you don't really need to charge this crystal. It's not the type that you would need to charge. But I'm going to get into all that stuff with, with you guys. And I'm going to... Everything that I've done, I've done this for a long time. And I have been into crystals my entire life. So any kind of knowledge, anything that I know, I'm going to pass on and I'm going to pass it along. And you could ask me any kind of questions, whatever, in the comments. But I'm going to leave it there. And... Uh, this is Lipidolite. It is gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous stone. All right. Have a good one, guys. I'll see you next time. Today we're going to talk about smoky quartz. Smoky quartz. And I think the first thing we need to do before I get into metaphysical properties and all that fun stuff, smoky quartz, it gets a little confusing. Now, why does it get confusing? The main reason is there's so many different types of smoky quartz out there. You could go to a crystal shop and you're going to see smoky quartz ranging from crystal clear looking where it's barely visible, where it's just like a hint of smoke, like a, a grayish tint to it, similar to the one I'm holding here. 
Um, and then there's other times where you're going to go and see them vary all the way to a, just a solid black color. Now, what gets confusing with smoky quartz is a lot of people don't realize that some of the smoky quartz is irradiated. And when I say irradiated, it is treated with gamma rays. Now, again, I don't, I don't know exactly what gamma rays are. The only thing I know with gamma rays is I think they use that to turn the Hulk into the Hulk. <laughs> that's how Bruce Banner became the Hulk. That's my extent of gamma rays. Uh, but whatever they do, they treat it um, to a point where they take a actual clear piece of quartz. Not like this. This is an actual authentic smoky quartz. But they will take a crystal clear piece of quartz and then they will turn it into this. And this is irradiated quartz. Now, usually irradiated smoky quartz, when you find this in the crystal shops, it's going to be pure black. See how this is just completely jet black? This is irradiated. Um, this was definitely treated with gamma radiation or however they do it. Um, whatever the process may be. This was at one point a clear piece of quartz. Nothing more. And then they used it gamma rays and turn it into this. Now, with that being said, I know it gets confusing and you're probably thinking, uh-oh, is there certain ones that are better, worse? What do I buy? Was I scammed? Blah, 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 blah. Um, honestly, you could use either one. In, in, in terms of the treating of it where it turns when they irradiate it, both are going to give you great benefits. So you don't have to be that concerned if you picked up a piece of smoky quartz, because honestly, the irradiated stuff can get pretty expensive. Um, but a lot of people pass off the irradiated as natural. And yes, the thing is, it is natural. It's a natural quartz crystal, but it was treated. This is, now, hang on a second. This one is a natural crystal. You could tell by looking at all the rough spots, everything. This came right out of the ground. This wasn't polished. This wasn't cut, anything crazy like that. This was a natural quartz point that came out of the ground. And then they treated it with the gamma radiation and irradiated it so it's jet black this one is cut and polished but it's natural smoky quartz so i know it gets confusing but the thing is no matter really what you pick up if you get the irradiated whether you get the um natural both are going to have great benefits and i'm going to about i'm going to go over those right now so what is smoky quartz going to do for you? So the best thing, everybody should have smoky quartz in their tool bag, so to speak. If you have limited crystals, this is one of them. Definitely. Whether it's irradiated, whether it's natural, whatever the case may be, you're going to want smoky quartz in your tool bag. Even if you have 10 crystals, this should be one of them. Smoky quartz is a grounding crystal and it is an amazing transmuter of energy. And what I mean, what I mean by that is this is going to filter in any energy that's coming into it. It's going to suck it up and release it. And when it comes out, it's going to be positive energy so it's going to take all the negative energy anything that's around you whether it be from another person whether it be from electronic devices um uh, that's a, a little bit off topic but i'll get to that in a minute but let's stick to just 
plain old negative energy. You're, you're at work all day. And how many times do you have somebody that is just a constant complainer and everything is negative? And a lot of times that energy, if you're not in the best state of mind, it can penetrate you, your energy body and start to bring you down. And you're going to start to think like the, the person that's spewing out all this negativity and eventually it's going to just soak up in your energy body. You're going to carry it with you. You're going to take it home with you and it's going to be stuck to you. This right here is going to take that energy. It's going to filter it. I look at smoky quartz as a filter. If there's one word that I could associate with smoky quartz, it's a filter. Think of it like a filter. That's what I do. It's going to bring in that negative energy. And when it comes out the other side, it's going to be positive. It's going to, now it may not necessarily be positive, but it's, it's going to neutralize it. It's going to definitely neutralize it and make it so it's not good or bad or whatever the case may be, but it's going to get rid of that negative energy. So now when, what's the difference? Can I use this as a smoky quartz to do the same thing? Absolutely. Irradiated versus natural. Here's the difference in my opinion. And it might surprise you. Irradiated is stronger. It is more of a stronger, more potent effect. Now, sometimes that's good. Sometimes that's bad. But if you're looking for potency, where you want to clean up that gunk, clean up that junk, get all that negative energy, all that stuff, and just transmute it, you could use either one. Irradiated is going to do it more effectively. It's, it's stronger. It's a stronger vibration to it. Um, you could use either or, though. A lot of people, of course, are going to argue and say natural is the way to go. In a way, I would agree. If you work with natural more, yes, it's going to be more of a, uh, a finer energy where it's still going to do the same thing. It might be better in the long run if you're working with uh, to heal but if you want to get rid of negative energy and transmute it pretty quickly, either will work. And irradiated is a little bit, it's got a little bit more of a punch. So both are great. So if you have this and you're thinking at the beginning of the video, oh no, did I get ripped off? No, actually you got yourself a pretty powerful crystal. They're, they're both awesome. It's, it's all, again, it's all quartz. It's all the same stuff, but Smoky, think of it as a filter. That is the best way. Now, what else can this do for, me, for you? In terms of taking that negative energy and transmuting it and turning it into a neutral or a positive energy, there is also, it's going to protect you from electromagnetic stuff. Stuff that your phone spews out all day. Stuff that your computers spew out all day. I mean, we are constantly, constantly around all this type of technology. And this is a, a cluster, also irradiated. Jet black crystals, or it's, it's kind of easy to see it, if it's irradiated or not. But... All that electromagnetic frequency that's that's smashing off you and it's all over the house. If you keep, whether it be on your person or throughout your home, I would recommend putting some smoky quartz or keeping it near you. Keep it near a place where you're sitting. If you're in the den or the basement a lot or your room, keep one near your bed. Very good to have around to just transmute that energy and that's all it does now this is a, it's obviously quartz what would you do in terms of cleansing it i would cleanse this absolutely you don't have to do it constantly but if you're gonna pick up some smoky quartz 
definitely cleanse it. If you're going to work with it, cleanse it. If it's sitting around your house long enough, you're going to want to cleanse it um, and get all the the stuff that's stuck to it. Because it, it is one of those crystals where it's not going to hold the energy like a, a pure clear quartz would. It is going to definitely get rid of the energy, but I would still cl- I would still cleanse it, and you don't have to do it constantly, but I still would do it. You don't really have to charge smoky quartz, but I would give it a, a cleanse once in a while. Um, but n- unlike a, a clear quartz, the negative stuff isn't really going to stick to it because it's going to be transmuted. So that's kind of good, but still, I... I Call me crazy. I, I like to cleanse my smoky quartz once in a while, especially if it's near your bed or near you quite a bit or on your person. So this is, and this is a beautiful one, beautiful cluster. So what else can we do? Here's another one. A lot of people don't realize there are, oh boy, a lot of negative entities. Now, when I say negative entity, you're going to go right to the, you know, a demon, uh, a goblin, uh, you know, some kind of uh, ghost. This is great for getting rid of paranormal stuff that's stuck to you. Now, not everybody has some kind of crazy astral demon connected to their energy body. But what you don't know is between our world and the physical world we're in, and the astral plane, which is just right between, it's right next in line, mirroring our current world, there are little beasties out there, and they're all over the place. And you can look this up, that's a whole other video, but little, think of it like bugs when you're out in the woods and you get a tick on you. I mean, these little entities are going to stick to your astral body. And a lot of times they get there. Obviously you can't see them. You don't know they're there. Then a lot of these things can cause problems. They could cause diseases over time. Sometimes they hang on for a long time. Other times they're only there for a little bit. Smoky quartz, they're like little astral parasites. Think of them like that. And little astral vampire type things where they're going to just stick to you and slowly drain your energy. And... They're out there, and you could pick them up, who knows, anywhere you go. It, um, so, the thing is, this is perfect for that. Smoky Quartz is a filter. It's going to filter out. It's going to get rid of all that junk. And it's perfect for those paranormal little entities just getting rid of all that junk. Any of that kind of stuff. Um, definitely, in terms of physical stuff, This is a root chakra stone. This is going to connect you to the base, to the earth. You want to work with this in terms of, in terms of a chakra root, a hundred percent. Smoky quartz is a root chakra stone. Work with it on the lower chakras down to the root, but anything that you start in anything you want to start with the root chakra you never just want to grab yourself some amethyst or high vibrational crystals and just start working with your crown chakra your your third eye everybody wants to go right for that stuff most of the illnesses and all that kind of stuff you got to start from ground up you got to start with that root chakra if that has issues and it's not drawn in enough ener- universal energy You're going to have all kinds of problems. And if you don't clear that, number one, right out of the gate, you're you're going to have issues. So definitely, when you work with smoky quartz, it's a root chakra stone. Work with it to clear that root chakra, to balance it, to transmute all that energy, get all all those little astral parasites off you, and just transmute into better energy that you could use for good things so one more thing well a couple more things it's great for lower body issues whenever you're working with 
smoky quartz, when I say root chakra stuff, that's associated with your bowels, your liver, your uh, digestion, all that stuff. And if any of that is sluggish, this is a perfect stone to work with because it's going to help the root chakra. And I don't want to overstress it, but this is what you need right here. If I mean, of, there's obviously other crystals that are going to uh, help with root chakra stuff. But this one is a filter. Think of it as a filter. That's the best way. Um, one more thing. The uh, A lot of people get road rage. This is perfect to keep in your car. And you could be the nicest person in the world. And suddenly those demons come out <laughs> when you're in the car. And all that negative energy just spews forth. And suddenly you're an entirely different person screaming at somebody out the window. We don't know why it happens, but keep a piece of smoky quartz in your car and you'll see that greatly diminished or be non-existent. It's a great road rage crystal. I just wanted to mention that because just keeping a little piece will help. A lot of people keep it in their car specifically for that reason. So it's great for that. Um, one more thing here. When I, we were talking about it in the beginning, irradiated has that jet black. Now, here here's something. I don't want to throw you guys a curveball. However, look at this guy. This is completely natural. This is not irradiated. This is a Lemurian from Tibet. And this is... The only reason I wanted to show you that is... This is not a cheap crystal, and it's a beautiful crystal. But if you go to the store, um, if you're starting to look at this and you're thinking, oh, it's obviously irradiated because it's jet black. However, this is not. So you really need to be mindful when purchasing smoky quartz. The best thing you could do, talk to the person that runs the shop or selling them online. Um, just try to get your information straight because something like this, they're out there and they're they're not cheap. If you Google um, smoky quartz and look for these, some crystals like this could be thousands of dollars. I'm, I'm not saying this one was thousands of dollars, but it, you just got to be careful. But again, you're still going to get awesome benefits from either the natural or the irradiated. So either way, it's awesome stuff. Definitely keep it in your tool bag and treat it and use it a lot because it's going to help benefit you on so many different levels. And it's one of those where you want to start from the ground up, work with smoky quartz. All right. We'll see you guys next time.